Dr. Williams, welcome to the University Thank of Thank you Minnesota. very much. Um, you were here today as part of the spirituality uh, conference here at the university, mm -hmm. uh, where you, you talked about uh, nourishing uh, the spirit. You mm -hmm. gave uh, perhaps three elements mm -hmm. um, to that. Um, do, do you want to just embroider on mm, that thank you. a little bit? Yes, I wanted to suggest that when we talk about the spirit, we're not just talking about some, um, <clears throat> some funny little thing that lives somewhere inside the body, but the way in which we connect up our bodies and our minds and our environment all together. So I was suggesting three areas where we really need to work at that development and three ways in which we nourish that connecting side of us. We need other people we can rely on, what I call the dependable other, the person who will go away and will learn our language and speak and listen properly. We need memories <clears throat> and we need people around who can help us talk about our memories honestly bring them out, deal with them. The temptation is just to edit everything down to the good memories. And a really good counsellor or pastor or accompanier will let us deal with the bad memories too, and give us time to work through them, honestly. Otherwise, if we bury them, they go pretty poisonous. We need to understand our bodies and the way our bodies carry memory within them, the pathways we've learned, the reactions we've learned. And um, I'm suggesting too that in all the great religions, actually, you've got all those elements at work. You've got the sense of God as the one who knows our language, who works at our pace and is dependable, and religious communities that, when they're doing their job, are trustworthy. We've got um, the stories we tell about ourselves and about our whole community, and we've got the rituals that uh, give us rhythms for the body. Um, when you were talking about dependable others, mm. Um, could you just define that as mm. you, as you mm. understand that? <clears throat> None of us actually starts out as a, an isolated unit. We learn language, we learn how to look at the world because there are people looking at us and we look at them. We learn from our mothers. We, we are spoken to before we start speaking. So to have somebody there who's reliable, who's not going to let us down, and who's not going to make us feel worthless. That's, that's the key thing. And so many mental health problems, as many people said this morning, have their origins in a basic experience of being made to feel worthless at some very early stage in life. And that's the opposite of having a dependable other around. Uh, when you say dependable other, uh, you mean somebody perhaps might just listen? Who might just listen, yes. And a great deal of work in mental health is about learning how to listen so that you don't misidentify the problem so that you don't make people feel they're not worth listening to. And, uh, and you, finally, you touched on empathy. Mm. Um, <coughs> in as much as it, um, I think you said that if somebody says that they understand what you're going through, they don't really understand. That's right. You, there comes a point where the most empathetic thing you can say to somebody else is, I don't understand what you're going through. Not quite in those terms, but you'd say, uh, uh, I'm not going to pretend that I understand how awful this feels. Um, I just have to listen to what you have to say about it. Because sometimes if I say, like Sybil in Forty Towers, oh, I know, yeah. you know that doesn't really, <laughs> doesn't really cut it. Yeah. And, and would you say that's the, almost the starting point? Then? I think that's the beginning of wisdom, where we think, no, I don't know, I've got, I've got to shut up here. I've got to, to listen a bit. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.